The only weird thing is, okay. Hello, uh, this is Dan Hinman. Welcome to tonight's Facebook Live broadcast for the uh, North America Northwest Public Affairs social media group. And tonight I'm thrilled to have Chloe Jones with us to talk about the South Hill community um, uh, Facebook page. So I see some of you are starting to join us already. I think I'm going to wait just a moment before we move ahead from here. We're trying something new tonight. So normally when you join the call, you would see me or maybe me and Sandy in the camera, we would talk to you about things. What we have learned is that in a Facebook live broadcast, you have one of two options. You can either be on camera while you talk to everyone who's attending, or you can share a screen while you're giving your presentation, but you can't switch back and forth, at least not with the standard format, which is what I'm working off of. And so tonight we've decided to just show the screen. And um, Sandy is here with me, ready to moderate any comments. Sandy, say hello to the group. Hello, everybody. And then I'm pleased to say that we have Chloe Jones uh, on this call as well. Chloe, you want to say hi to folks? Hello, everyone. Now, I'm hoping that you can hear this because... The technology that we're using is, uh, Chloe is on my iPhone, and um, I'll be chatting with her through the iPhone. Hope you can hear the iPhone. We'll be doing kind of a Q&A tonight for this so that um, you can hear her answers, you can hear my questions, and I'm showing you the South Hill community page. So um, if anyone could comment about whether you're able to hear Chloe, why don't you say something else, Chloe, to the group for a moment? Well, here, let's do it this way. Why don't you start by introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself, what your calling is, and how long you've been managing the South Hill community page. Okay, well, great. Um, my name is Chloe Jones, and my calling is the uh, South Hill Stake Assistant Director of Public Affairs, News and Media Relations. And I've been in this calling just a little over a year. Um, and our South Hill Community Facebook page was was created actually by our Public Affairs Director, Jen Carver, back in September of last year. However, it wasn't until um, after I was called that we decided to go live with the page. There was a whole two of us at the time and that was back in January, February. -ish. So we've been up and running for about 10 or 11 months. Great. Thanks for, uh, for giving us that much information, Chloe. I just realized I had my volume turned only halfway up. So now it's up all the way. <laughs> and hopefully if anybody's having any difficulty hearing, they'll, it'll be much better now. Everybody's people are checking in and saying they can hear, so hopefully we're okay. Okay, good. All right, so Chloe, let's start by talking about priesthood direction. We know that everything we do in public affairs is under priesthood direction, and I'm wondering, first of all, what priesthood direction you might have received for your South Hill community page, and by that I mean, has your stake president asked you to use the page for any specific purpose or given you any special direction? Okay, well, you know, we have been blessed, um, very blessed by outstanding members of our state presidency, and they have given us a large amount of flexibility to really do with the page what we feel inspired to do, and we're so grateful for that trust. Um, we try to be very thoughtful and careful as we interact with our community um, to help move the work of the Lord forward in this very unique and uh, powerful way. So you're basically saying that uh, they've said, here, please go use this page to build better relationships <laughs> with the community, 
and use your wisdom. Is that what you're saying? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say your main objective is then as you're thinking about the posts that you make and the frequency and the kind of things? What is your key objective with this page? Well, the, object, the objective for this page can really be summed up in four words, and that is be of some use. Uh, if you take a look back at the beginning of our page, of our um, when we started posting, you you'll notice that we were very member focused, and most of our posts were awesome and great posts, but they were really geared towards the members of the church. And um, honestly, Dan, it wasn't until after we had our training with you, that very first Facebook Live training a few months ago, that we were really able to catch the vision of what our page could be, the potential for good in our area we could have, and that if we would just shift ever so slightly our focus um, to be more on those around us, then we could have a, um, a bigger impact in our community. So it was um, about that time after our that, that live training that we decided to change the name of our Facebook page from South Hill State Community to just South Hill Community, and we removed the word of the stake of, of the stake from the title. We wanted our name to be a clear reflection of our intentions, um, and we wanted uh, and how we wanted to be perceived in the community. So, and I think that that really helped. Oh, that's good to know. So, um, this was you're referring to the idea that in order what our what the opinion leaders or people of influence in the community care about is more about them than about us, right? Well, abs absolutely. Um, I, I was thinking about this the other day. We wouldn't um, we wouldn't just randomly probably uh, join a Baptist, you know, a Baptist Facebook group that just mentioned their announcements and um, things that were just specific to their religion and their beliefs. But we might, however, we, we might join their group if and pay attention a little bit if they were posting um, a broader broader events in the in the um, community or if they had great positive stories, inspirational quotes, and things like that, we might pay attention. And so that's kind of the the idea is, if, if other people are looking at my page, what would make them want to to join and to be a part of, of what we have going on? I like that approach, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, it feels like it's been successful for you. As I scroll down the page and just show some of your recent posts, we see that um, you've got some timely posts going on here, of course. The first post we see is the Veterans Day post, which is tomorrow. And um, so let's talk a little bit about how you select the posts that, uh, that you decide to put on the page. Um, well, obviously paying attention to any holidays that are going on, our um, director, Jen, Jen Carver, posts on Sundays, and that's her veteran post up there. Um, and so uh, just paying attention to those things. We made a post at Halloween time, and um, yeah, very, very timely things. But I wish I had a really cool answer about what I what I do to where I get my ideas to post, and I don't. But I, I just try to pay attention. Um, I have a few minutes in the morning usually when my oldest two boys are in seminary, just waiting for them to finish their class. That I kind of peruse through Facebook a little. I see what pops up on my news feed that might make a great shareable post. Um, I look at Just Serve website, the Just Serve website, to see if there's any additional service projects in our area. I try to make posts for that and help promote it in some way. I also try to consider any of the partnerships that we already have established in the community or relationships that we would like to develop and share their triumphs on Facebook or sometimes they have um, needs or posts that they would like to have shared. And I just try to be their cheerleader. Um, as they're also working towards the same common goal that we are to do good and bless the lives of those they serve. I really like what you've said there, Chloe, common goals. And sometimes when people say, well, 
when should I share something that another organization has posted? The answer that I like to give is that, do they have a common goal? Is this something that we believe in as well that we think would benefit the community if we help promote? And it sounds like that's what you're thinking of when you when you decide whether to share posts from other organizations. Absolutely. So as we scroll down here, as we see, uh, now I'm looking at, by the way, Chloe has given me admin privileges for this page tonight because we're going to take a minute and look at the insights for the page. And so you'll see things like people reached, engagement, boosts unavailable here that, that I'm seeing because I'm admin, but you won't see as a, as a regular visitor to the page. So just kind of pretend like, like those aren't there. But as we scroll down, it was interesting to me to see that this post, this inspirational post that was 23 hours ago, has 162 shares. And as many as 10,000 people reached. And that reach figure, by the way, is this says this was placed on that many people's news feeds it doesn't necessarily mean they've seen it or they've even scrolled past it. It just means it was delivered to that many people. So as you look at your analytics on your pages, keep that in mind. The strongest indication of interest is shares. When you see a post like this that's 162 shares, 162 people are sharing this with their friends. And that's why you have this large number here. But, but what about this, Chloe? Do you see the, a kind of a tendency for these inspirational quotes to get a lot of sharing? Or is this an anomaly? Or, or what's your thought there? <laughs> OK, well, um, the, the first thing is um, if, if, you're, if the quotes go great. Quotes are, they are relatable to a lot of people. They're easy to share, um, and one thing to remember when you're sharing a post is that if it's just about you, it's probably not going to go anywhere. It's probably just going to stay where it is. So these quotes, as they're very relatable to other people, they're e they're easy to share in different in different situations. Uh, one of I'll let you on a little secret. One of the things that I do, the first three people that should share your post should be you and your media team. And, and that's the way I do it. So the second I put that up, I also either share it on my personal page or I share it with a friend or I share it with a family member or I participate in the, in the community groups and just to get it out the door. And from there, then it kind of has a mind of its own, as you can tell. Um, people will either like it. Now, there's been some quotes we've put up there, too, that haven't, that haven't gone that far. But this is a great example of one that, that people really liked, and they, they um, just kind of took off with it. Yeah. So as we keep scrolling down, here's an invitation to attend a Veterans Day celebration for example, and there, I don't know if anybody shared that, but that's okay, right? Because you're still reaching people. Uh, yeah, what were you going to say about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, not everyone is going to be interested in an event or an activity that you share. Um, so, uh, I don't know, just use, use the spirit to know how, how it's going to help you in your life. Um, one, one thing just to keep in mind that is if you look at that veterans post, it's not very long. It's not very wordy. And that's, that's something we kind of need to look out for when we're making posts. Um, it, your posts don't need to be long or wordy to be effective. They don't need to be perfect either. So you should just um, it, focus outward and think about other people. Yeah. Um, if we keep scrolling through here, then here's an example of you sharing a Just Serve opportunity where, and you refer to justserve.org in the graphic. And by the way, tell me about these graphics. Do you create these yourself? 
So just serve is the easiest. I mean, it's the easiest for to post. They are so fun because you really don't have to come up with anything on your own. Um, it's all there on the just serve website. I just go in there. Um, I use, I use Canva a lot, and this is what I did. I just made a graphic for whatever they need because we know social media is largely about pictures. And so I create my own picture with um, with a post and, um, and share those. And it's great because these can also be shared in groups that, that you're a part of uh, with, with the ward and the community alike. Right. This is a really good point. And... Uh, Just Serve definitely is a rich source of, of posts, opportunities. And by the way, if anyone has a question, we're going to continue to ask, I'll ask Chloe a few more questions, but then we're going to turn it over to you to answer your questions. So be thinking about any questions you have for Chloe, post them in the comment section, and uh, we'll make sure that, that Sandy will make sure that she she's asked those. As I scroll down then, Chloe, tell us about how often you do uh, post a, something from or about the church. What are your thoughts about that? Um, well, we, we honestly don't post very often about the church. We actually have two Facebook um, pages. This is our outward facing public Facebook page, our community page. And then we have an inward facing stake page where we can put a lot of those things about the church, um, you know, announcements and um, activities that are happening and things like that. So we have a closed group as well that our director runs. Um, but this community group, we try to keep it real um, focused on the community. And that doesn't mean that we can't share anything that's not um, that's churchy. We can definitely do that. But we, we try to do it in, in a way that's understood in, in the language of the community. So we share a lot about love. We share about kindness and service and, and those ways. So actually, Dan, um, also we post about two, between two to five times a day um, on our page. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what's more important than, you know, those, the, how many times we post is, is consistency. Um, and, and speaking of like gaining trust with the community and building those bridges, we can't just, we can't be unreliable. So if, if we make a sustainable plan, we need to just execute it well. Um, you wouldn't want to stop by a grocery store that wasn't open when it said it was going to be, and you're not going to want to reach out to a community Facebook group if you don't know when or if they're going to be around or post, and so consistency is really the key. Chloe, we have a few questions for you. Kirk Davis is asking, do you belong to any Facebook community pages? I belong to every Facebook community page that I can think of. <laughs> so, so yes, um, I spent a lot of time just what are the what are the Facebook pages out there? Who uh, there's tons, there's tons. Look in your area, and yes, I belong to every single one that I can that I can find. And then uh, Nona Springer asks, "What did you say that you used for graphics?" Um, for graphics, I mostly use Canva, um, just because it just interfaces really well on my uh, phone. But there's tons of um, there's tons of apps like PicMonkey or Word Swag or any of those things that are out there that have templates. It's easy to use. You can change the words around, or put your different colors on there, your own picture, what just whatever you want. It only takes a few minutes, and really. Uh, more often than not, it's worth the little bit of extra effort to help increase the traffic to your page. And are some of them both web-based and phone apps, mobile apps? Um, yes, yeah, all, all of them are. You can either get it on the web or, or on your phone, absolutely. I do all of my public affairs work. Um, everything on this page is done by uh, on my phone. Fabulous. Oh. Are you boosting your posts? Daniel Kohler asks that. We have never boosted a post yet, but I'm kind of intrigued by the idea. But no, we haven't. We haven't ever boosted a post yet. 
And Becky um, Burton is asking, do you have others that are helping you post two to three times a day? Um, no, Becky, right now it's, it's just me. I hope that um, in the next few weeks we might have um, some more team members on, on our social media team here. But um, right now I post Monday through Saturday and our director takes Sunday over for me. She's amazing, by the way. <laughs> Wonderful. Any other questions, Sandy, at this point? So far, that's all we have coming in. So please ask your questions. Yeah, ask more questions. So then, Chloe, you had a couple of successes you wanted to share tonight. So do you want to move to that? And should I try to pull any posts up to the screen as you talk? Or are you just going to share some ideas? Um, sure. I, um, I, I want, I think it's important that I mention here that, um, I, when I post, I reach out to a lot of people and oftentimes when I'm sharing their post, I've either already reached out to them or I might reach out to them afterwards with something like, Hey, thanks for letting us be a part of this, or we're happy to share, or thanks for all you do in the community. Anything I can think of, um, to just establish some sort of relationship there. So many of these posts I, I am personally involved in. So um, let me just briefly share a few highlights then, Janice, um, from stories that we have on our page. The last In the last two months, um, we'll give you an idea about maybe po the possible influence that we can have for good in, in our callings in this community. The first one is, the Food is Free Project, and um, Dan, I'm sure if you scroll down, you can you can find that. It was back in um, September, I believe, though, so it might be too far to scroll down, but um, the very end of September, I believe, is when we shared that, that post. But um, I was looking through Facebook one morning, and I saw a post from a man that I did not know, and I hadn't seen his post before, but he was giving away free food on the side of the road that he grew himself. And he was calling this his Food is Free project. Um, and he has actually has a couple different chapters. But anyways, I decided to reach out to him and, and say, hey, I would love to share your post on our community page. And he wrote back and he was very grateful. And through a little brief conversation, I uh, decided to go ahead and write up a little article about what he was trying to do and spend a little bit extra time creating this post that we made. He was so appreciative, so appreciative of this effort. Um, his Facebook numbers uh, grew substantially after the post was made, and I believe our page, the reach was over um, 2.6 thousand that um, saw saw the post. Or, or, or reach um, and I don't know the patch analytics I'm not privy to that information um, patch it patch I, I don't patch is a local news media platform that I use to write up some of these articles and make posts for people in the community it's free resource uh, we can talk about that later if anybody has questions about it but I'm not privy to the patch analytics once I post that article um, but what I do know is that that article was liked uh, somewhere between four or 500 times on uh, the patch site. So when you're looking at reach, you know if it's liked five, 500 times that the reach is um, probably double, triple those numbers. So um, it was very successful for him and he now has one great interaction with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints tucked away in his pocket, um, which yeah. is, it's wonderful. It's what we want. Yeah, great, great um, story. There's, there's, I've got two more quick, quick little stories. There's, um, there's other, there's another story. It happened in similar, in a similar way. I came across the post. Um, as I was looking through Facebook one morning, and it was Peg's clothing closet. And um, I, without knowing anything about Peg's clothing, I just saw a post that she said that she was giving away clothes out of her garage to people in need. So again, 
I sent a message and I asked if I could share our efforts on the community page, which of course she was delighted and again um, decided to take a little bit more time and effort to write up an article for her and ask if ask about her life and what made her want to do this for people and what was interesting um, and a really neat experience is that I had I learned that her husband had died of cancer five years ago and she was kind of going through this rough patch in her life um, thinking that maybe her efforts to try to serve people weren't going very well <laughs> that maybe they had been misplaced and um, her heart was really touched and she cried over this article and, and thanked me and I just think it's interesting, you know, how our Heavenly Father, He knows all of His children. He knows who needs encouragement. He knows who needs a little shout out in life. Um, and we are in this unique position to be able to, to shine a light. We've basically been handed a flashlight, you know, and Heavenly Father says, all right, here you go, shine it on a few people. Um, it was just such a great experience. Her, her Facebook group, grew by 300 people after this article and she actually had so many people offering to bring her donations for her clothing closet that she ended up having to change her hours and even close down for a few days so um, now now because a little more effort thoughtful effort went through um, she has this great support from the community around her and again now a little experience with the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints um oh, so wonderful we, yeah we really have a great um a great opportunity do we have time for another little story can i ask a few questions first Claire? yeah sure okay. absolutely um jet spencer is wondering if you've run into people being belligerent or otherwise disrespectful to the page or other members of the page and jet thompson says that he notices it looks like you aren't necessarily looking for comments it looks like more about views and shares any issues with inappropriate or negative comments so both of those questions are wondering about negative things that might happen on pages so you know i worry about that sometimes too but so far we haven't had any trouble um everyone is is very kind when they either comment on, on our page um, and so we haven't run into any of that yet. I'm not sure exactly what actions I will take with, when or if that happens, but so far the community has accepted us very well and we haven't had to, to really worry about that. I mean, it's kind of hard to say something real negative about, you know, serving the homeless or, <laughs> or something, although, I mean, it can happen, it can happen, but, but so, so far I haven't had to worry about that. When you're sharing good opportunities, it's harder to have negativity maybe exactly Becky Burton asks do you, well you talked about sharing information but her question before you really got into that was wondering if you share other sites and their information like events and then her further question is that it looks like you find stories and contact them personally and write about them yourself versus reposting their posts and then we could ask, are, do you share somebody else's site as well? Okay, those are those are great questions. Um, I do a little bit of both. I um, I absolutely do share other people, especially any partnerships that we have. I try to share their posts. Um, any any people that we want to have partner partnerships with, I try to share their posts, and I do a combination of then also creating my own posts. It's, um, I find it's important to to create your own post because as that's shared, then obviously that will lead them back to you. So it's really a balance and of and, and just careful thought out um, what you want from the post experience. And so if if we need if this is a good post that I can recreate, I'm going to do that and I'll tag them at the bottom. You can see in some of my posts. I will I will tag I will tag them and they will come back through and like it. So it's still acknowledging these other people, but writing it in in my own way. So yeah, a little bit of both. And Kurt Davis, following up on some of this, is I'm curious if when you reach out to people in the community, do you do by messenger or phone call or both? 
Um, I do both, but mostly by messenger. A lot of people don't want to want to be bothered by phone call, but um, it's mostly by messenger. I just shoot them a little message and and say, hey, I'd love to share this, or thanks for letting us share this on our community page, or or, or whatever it is. Any way I can contact them um, so that they well know who we are and that they can also uh, have a good feeling and experience with with the church in that way. Wonderful. Jed Spencer um, asks, he says he's noticed the quotes that you shared are often watermarked um, with the name of your page. Are those quotes you've come up with yourself or taken from other sources? And Becky Burton wonders how you watermark. Okay, so um, these are quotes that I just find. I, I I Google quotes like every day. We try to put a quote on the page every day. So I'll, I'll either have heard it from somewhere or I'll Google inspirational quotes and anything that um, I create in Canva or the other apps, uh, PicMonkey or Word Swag or any of those things that I create, I will watermark. If you look and you see a post on my page that does not have South Hill Community on it, then I did not make that graphic. I'm just resharing it wherever I found it on the web. So I'm just resharing the post. Um, but I do try to make my own graphic, again, because it brings people back to the page. When that graphic is shared, then they can see, oh, South Hill Community. And I'm sure you've done that with other graphics you've seen as you've perused Facebook. Um, and you say, oh, what's what's this? Um, who is this this page that has, has created this? And you go back and you find it. So um, watermarking is super simple on uh, I again I use Canva a lot so I'll refer to that but in Canva there's a way you just you just type up South Hill community in the words and then there's a transparency button and I just kind of pull that transparency button back to make the words South Hill community very light and then I can place those that text anywhere I want mm -hmm. Good. also Sandra David thanks so much for that information it's so helpful Sandra sure. Davis is wondering, when you contact people, do you say up front that you are from the church? And, and Daniel Kohler wants to know, um, when you contact them, do you let them know it is the outward facing page of the church? Okay, so um, it depends on the situation. I, if it's just, it depends on what the post is. If it's just somebody's good news story that I want to, here on our page also, I will just say I manage the South Hill Community Facebook page and I would love to share your post. And if they get on the South, and I'll send them a link to our page at the same time so that they can get on, check out and see who we are. Um, if, if it's more of a, a nonprofit organization that I am trying to share one of their posts, I might mention who I am, my calling, how I would like to try to help them by sharing their information, how they can reach out back to me. Um, and so I, I might do it that way. Wonderful. You'll notice I've scrolled back up now to where you have the about South Hill community, our story. This is clearly where you represent that the page is, is a, uh, is managed by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I think that's what you mean, Chloe, by if people come to the page, then they can then they can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's important, and that's why I sent them a link. They can see what kind of things that we post, and, and also, yes, to read our story. So they know that we're managed by by a church. Um, as a matter of fact, I got a, a message recently that was, hey, I just want to know when church starts. And um, I don't think they really wanted to know when church start started. They wanted probably just to confirm that we were run by a church page. But um, yeah, it's, it's displayed there under our story. Yeah. So um, you, oh, Sandy, any more questions right now? Just one more. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Jed Spencer is asking, is it important to ask permission to share a post if it's already shareable? No. 
I mean, are, are you talking about um, legally? Or <laughs> I mean, no. The the reason why I do it is because I I want the connection. I want the relationship, and I want them to come back. And I want um, I want them to have a good feeling about. Uh, so often in social media, there's there's contact, but there's not really contact. It's just spewing of information. It's just share this, share that, share this. And and um, I've had some people come back and say, wow, that was a really nice message. Thank you for sending, uh, sending a message. And so, again, it's just my effort to try to connect with the community. And if it's posted, it is shareable. Anything that's public mm -hmm. is public. So, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk Davis is also asking, Dan, when appropriate, would you walk us through the page insights? Oh, yeah. They, thanks, Kirk. This is where we're going. Uh, after I ask one other question, and that is, um, Chloe, so what do you think if you were to say, I notice as we scroll through here, there's at least one inspirational quote by Jeffrey Holland, one by Thomas S. Monson. What if you were to start interspersing, say, every six or seven posts? What if you did something like shared something from the church newsroom or quoted President Nelson and identified him as, as president of the church? What do you think would be the pros and cons of doing that? Well, actually, um, I appreciate that question, Dan. I, I Eventually, so in the beginning, we were just really, really member-focused, and now I think we're really, really community-focused. And what I'd like to do is I, uh, I learned from a, a different nonprofit organization by watching their page. And every Sunday, they would post um, something specific to – their church and I think I would like to start incorporating that into this page mm -hmm. as well as and that's a good opportunity Sunday's a good opportunity most people are very forgiving on Sundays <laughs> and, and, they won't, and they won't they won't get upset for a church page if you're going to post something about church on a Sunday they pretty they will they will forgive that so um, I think that's what I would like to start working towards and that's a good opportunity to make make a quote from from um from one of the apostles to absolutely share a newsroom story uh that sunday is a great opportunity for that and that is the direction that we uh, will be going hopefully soon i, I like that way of in integrating those so look Oh, Sandy? Chloe mentioned she had one other. All right. So we've got two things we want to do here. We want to show the insights and we have a story. And I think what I'd like to do is go to insights next and then finish on a really sweet story from Chloe. Sounds like a great idea. Okay. <laughs> All right. So clicking on insights, then Chloe, tell me when you can see the page and how you would like to me to scroll on this to explain this so yeah tell me what to do with the scrolling as you so take us through this page here well well actually dan you know i'm not used to looking at it on the computer oh um, yeah i i like i said i typically am on my phone um all the time with this and so you might be better okay. at um, finding things and just spouting it out. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me do that then. I think the thing that's really quite remarkable about the insights is this post reach figure here, right, kind of in the middle of the page as I look at it right now. In the last uh, in the last week, fifty thousand people reached. Fifty thousand. Wow. 50,000 people reached in the last week. Now, given this, what I already said, this means it was sent to 50,936 people's Facebook feeds. Whether they scrolled through to see it or not, we don't know that. But this is still quite a remarkable number. And also in the last week, 5,564 post engagements. That means a like, a comment, or a share. The total of likes, comments, and shares in one week on this page is 5,500. Um, 
this this is remarkable really in terms of the engagement i think that you're getting chloe um those are the the obvious highlights the other thing is you're extremely responsive to any messages an average of 22 minutes <laughs> response time um <laughs> so um and that raises kind of another question of how many uh how much time a day would you say you spend um uh, managing this page well probably total it's about two hours a day that i spend on my calling from from the morning when i'm just looking through facebook and i'm just seeing what's going on in the community today to to making uh, creating posts and to responding uh when someone shares shares our page i will also go back through there and like like their post as our page as well and it kind of is momentum keeps keeps the shares going etc keeps it showing up on the news feed so i probably spend about two hours a day but it's not all at the same time um i would be on facebook honestly that long anyways throughout the day (laughs) so Mm -hmm. when i sit down and rock my baby to sleep i'll hop on with my phone again everything's on my phone I, I i'm never sitting at the computer to do to do anything so okay not two hours. all right and and um just so everyone knows we're not setting a standard of everyone being uh, on the page for two hours or managing their page <laughs> chloe's a rock star in this field for sure and <laughs> So, so do what you can, how you can, right? Do what works for you. What works for you. And, and then keep these principles in play that when you do post things, connect with people, pray about the post, think about what other people want to hear and learn, and then intersperse our messages as seems appropriate. And I, I think those are really, you're teaching us, Chloe, some remarkable keys to success. I've flipped the page summary from seven days to 28 days at, at Kurt Davis's request. And now we see a total of 128,000 reach in the last 28 days, 21,000 likes, comments, or shares on the, on the pages um, in those 28 days. And... Um, 368 likes. Yeah. So lots of people joining the, so this, this 368 people who like the page in the last 28 days. So, um, so anyway, these are, these are some of the remarkable things that are happening as a result of the activity in this community. So let's go back then. Um, are there any final questions, Sandy, before we go to our closing um, story? There are a couple more questions here. Sherry Blodgett asks if you've ever shared a short video. And Jed Spencer asks if you share a post on your page for, say, a nonprofit, do they have a way of seeing how many of those post views came through our site? I'm just wondering. Uh, whether those community organizations would be able to track back that traffic they received as a result of our page if there wasn't already a personal connection made prior to the share. Okay, so so the first question is if I show a video. Um, they're, they're actually at the very beginning of when we first start posting there is a there is a video posted but i don't don't usually share videos yeah i think you're bringing up there's a and then there's one one little post that is like a six second video on a loop you know but um normally i don't share videos and that's just my personality (laughs) i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think it probably would add add to the community page honestly um the other question is is a good one too um I many, many times will snap a picture of the insights of how many people were reached on a certain post and hop on the messenger and send it to those people that I've posted with a little message, a little note that says, and look how I know only, you know, 20 people liked your post, but look how many people's hearts um, 
were touched and look how many people you you were able to reach with with this post or this story so thank you for sharing and thank you for being amazing in our community and so many times i will take a post of the people reached and send that through the messenger because i think it does help i it strengthens the relationships and um it also gives a little momentum to maybe hey maybe i should come up with another post or maybe you can share another one for me so i think it definitely helps that is so great. Yeah. Uh, one more question we have from Nona Springer. Uh, she says she knows that people love to laugh. What do you think about introducing comedy or comics? <laughs> well, I mean, again, I think that's just um, a personality thing for me. I, <laughs> um, I love to laugh also, but um, I, I don't want personally want to turn the community page into into that. I, I want it to stay focused on you really service, um, love, kindness, stories of goodness, and and keep it flowing in that sort of direction. I, I, I think you, you just will personally, this is according social media according to Chloe, by the way. Um, you just would invite a whole dis different atmosphere um, and I just don't want to deal with that so <laughs> yeah. so I just like to keep it um, just focused on service kindness and, and goodness what what your focus is depends upon what you're posting exactly yeah Kirk Davis is saying that on insights you can click on a post on post insights which show engagements on each post and that can be insightful so he's helping answer the question that, that Jed had earlier. Right. I think Jed. Right. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do now since we, uh, this has been awesome. Lots of really great questions. Lots of really great information. I'm going to recommend that additional questions you can come to Chloe through the message function within the community and ask her any questions that way that you'd want to at any time. You can also, um, you know, ask more questions in this um, in in this live broadcast, and Chloe will go through and answer any additional questions anybody has that way. But I Absolutely. wanted I wanted to transition now. Then Chloe, share your final example, and and then we'll. Oh, oh Sandy's uh, getting my attention. What's happening? Just one more question. I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> no, we like questions. Go ahead. Sandra, Sandra Go ahead. Davis has our, our final question here. Um, are others allowed to post on your page? Um, right now, no. <laughs> right now, it's just um, the director and myself, and we will hopefully be adding um, another person to our media team soon, but it's just just us we're, we're the only ones uh, anyone can comment though okay but it's not open to the public to post no no okay. i don't know <laughs> yeah good so any other questions after uh chloe closes here can be asked on this facebook page right just enter your questions just, in the comment section not just chloe there are several experts on the page that'd be that yep. would love to handle your question discussion is awesome Yes. So, Chloe, what, what's the uh, final story you wanted to share with us? Okay, so this last little story um, was a post that I made at Halloween. Um, in the days leading up to this post that I made uh, just recently, um, I, I had seen just around Facebook in a, different, a few different groups a question. And the question was essentially people were asking, does anyone know of any retired or senior assisted living facilities that allow trick-or-treaters on Halloween? And I had seen this question a few different places, but I really didn't think anything of it um, until the morning that I made this post. I was driving down the road. I had about 20 minutes before I needed to pick up my son from preschool. And the thought of these questions <laughs> on the post that I had seen entered my mind and uh, with the additional thought to solve the problem. Um, and in uh, true form, the way that the Lord loves to work, it just so happened at that moment that I was thinking this, that I was also driving right by one of these senior um, assisted living facilities. So obviously I pulled over 
Um, I parked my car and I made a few phone calls. Uh, these facilities were so excited. They said, yes, please bring your trick-or-treaters. We would really love the kids, um, more kids in the community to join us. So I sat right there in the parking lot. I pulled out my, my phone. I got on Canva and created a little post as quickly as possible because, remember, I had just 20 minutes before my son was going to get out of preschool, and I did not want to miss being right there when he walked out of those doors. So um, I made the post and threw it up on our Facebook page. And then I also shared it to two or three community groups um, that people that I has, had seen people ask about that question. The end result um, was that that little impromptu post was seen more than 9,000 times on our community uh, on our page. And it was shared countless places. I saw people replying to other people's comments with a screenshot of that post. I mean, it was literally everywhere. So um, the takeaway, what I hope that um, you could take away from these, these stories that I've shared is that with a little extra effort and maybe thinking a bit outside of the box, um, know that, that you can make a real difference in the lives of not just the members of your stake, but with those within the communities in which we serve and love and associate. Um, one, one more little thing, one more little thing. I, I like to think of our social media efforts as, you know, we're, we're missionaries of the skies. <laughs> I mean, if, if President Trump can have um, the Space Force, we can have missionaries in the skies, right? I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but, but we have potential um, on the Internet to reach thousands of people in a short amount of time. We can help solve problems. We can answer questions. We can be a light. We can shine a light on others. We can be of some use. And this Christmas season, you know, the Lord has asked us to focus our thoughts on reaching the one. I wonder what miracles will wait if we would, as we go into 20, the 2020 year, thinking about our outward facing social media pages and extend the Lord's call to minister to the one in our PA efforts. And simply ask ourselves, how can I reach the one in my community? I know that um, the Lord will surely direct us in those efforts. Yeah. Chloe, thank you so much. Thank you for all the good you're doing. And thank you for sharing that with our, with our, um, our members tonight. And uh, all of you, thank you for all the great questions, for being part of this, for joining in. We'll say good night, and uh, we'll see you again in a in a month or two. Yes, good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.